Come on, say it again. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Come on, the angels are all around and they're saying, I know he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Thank you Jesus.
that you would inhabit our praise, inhabit our worship, inhabit our words. And Father God, we'll be careful to give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give God praise. We'll continue in our worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is awesome and amazing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so grateful that God gave us another day. And we here we are to worship him. Amen. Amen. And how many of you have purpose in your heart this morning saying, Lord, I'm going to give you the best of me. Don't we ask God to give us the best of him? Don't we ask God to give us the best of him? Yeah. So this is our time now to worship and to honor God for who he is and what he has done. So this morning, with this being the first Sunday and we will be taking communion, this is the first Sunday, correct? Yeah. But we want to be in mind of what God has done for us. So I want to invite you to just sit back, relax, enjoy as the songs go forth. You are welcome to go in. but. We want to honor our God and everything that he has done for him. We don't just honor him on an Easter Sunday for dying on the cross and shedding his blood and everything that he has done. We honor him each and every day. Why? Because I'm grateful. Because yes. I'm grateful and I'm thankful and I know where I would be if it wasn't for the Lord. Hallelujah. And his unfailing love.
songs messed me up. And you went, yeah. you went through all of them. Amen, Pastor. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 salvation was all about Jesus. Do we realize where we would be without him? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, we, we, <laughs> we are in a land of no hope. The messages that come out of the world without hope. But we are the fortunate few who have grasped what hope is. And that hope is in Jesus. Oh, we thank you, God, for him. That precious saving blood. My goodness. Father, we come to you today humble and thankful that you sent your only begotten son to die on that cross for my sins. And Father, the power of that blood could wash away any stain, any sin. The power of forgiveness could forget about anything. Father, we thank you for new life. We thank you for hope. We thank you for a future. We thank you for Jesus. We love you, Lord. Lord, speak to us today. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord, charm some things up in us. And Lord, may we never lose sight of what Jesus has done for us. Oh, yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 And you did it on communion, son. Karen, come on now. So to those of you on Facebook Live, we want to welcome you. I didn't bring my handkerchief, and I do need one. Um, thank you. Uh, we will have communion at the end of service, or at the end of the message. So if you want to join in with us, uh, you may want to go and get some juice and crackers or bread or matzos, whatever you have in your house, and join us. For today, uh, as we go into the Word, I'm just going to warn you now, I got one Old Testament scripture. Two little verses. I know. I got a fever or something. But we're going to do three New Testament scriptures. So stay with me. And, and today we're going to start a new series called The Words of My Mouth. The Words of My Mouth. And today I want to talk about life giving words. Okay? And, and, and as you look on the screen, uh, you might see a bullhorn in the, at the corner of the screen. What are you blasting out when you talk? What are people hearing? Amen? So let's go into our English part of the lesson. And the, and the term life-giving, it means power, having power to give life and spirit. In other words, you really can't have a good life if you've got a low spirit. Make sense? The term invigorating, this ain't about a cologne or a lotion or, or a high-protein drink or a high-caffeine drink. It's about having an enlivening or stimulating effect. Yes. In other words, something said life-giving is going to invigorate somebody. Mm. The Bible says that he, that we have, that he has quickened us, quickened us, made us alive, taken us from death to life. Amen? Amen. And the term exhortation, there's a nice spiritual word for you, to encourage and to strengthen to encourage with wise and well-timed counsel. I'm going to put some emphasis on the well-timed. There is a right time and the right place to give people advice, but it's got to be driven by the Holy Spirit. It's there to encourage them. That doesn't mean you're going to tell them what they want to hear. You're going to tell them what they need to know. Amen. What they need to know is what's going to be, what's going to be the thing that delivers them. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. So the key verse for this month. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The words of my mouth, all right, they start where? They start from where? In our hearts. We're going to look into that. Now, what we need to understand about the effective words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. For death or life. In other words, what you say has consequences. The word consequences, the consequences can be good and they can be bad. Some things you say good are going to be returned into. You, you put out a positive seed, you're going to sow a positive seed. But if you put out something bad, you're going to have some weeds pop up in your life. There are going to be some consequences. There's going to be a, a comeback that you don't want. Make sense? So consequences are both good and bad when it comes to words. So where do words start? Let's go to Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12. And there Jesus is talking, verses 12, starting at verse 33, and we're going to go through verse 37. And this is Jesus talking. He says, make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. What's fruit? It's the produce, what comes out of it, okay? You brood of vipers, he's talking to religious folk here. How can you who are evil say something good? For out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Y'all catch that? The good man brings good things out of the good store up in him. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that men will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. My goodness. For by your words you will be acquitted and by your words you will be condemned. You don't want to have a reputation of somebody who gives a bad word. Well, how about this? Somebody who lies. I got a friend, uh, I, well, used to be a friend. I ain't seen him in years. But there, he would lie just a lot. He would make up stuff that's like, really, dude? But see, the problem with, our, with, with the friendship was I couldn't trust him because I couldn't trust his word. I didn't know what was in his heart. Am I making sense here? <laughs> Luke chapter 6, verses 43 to 45. This is a, a rehashing in another gospel. It says, no good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. In other words, if you planted an apple tree, you expect to get apples, right? You don't expect to get cucumbers. Am I making sense? Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from the thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. We've heard it twice there, right? We want to say the right thing. We want the good thing coming out of our heart. Amen. Anybody want to be evil? Amen. I'm in the right church. So, let's look at this. Tongues gone wild. Let's go to the book of James. James is a half-brother of Jesus. He was also uh, the bishop, if I understand it right, I believe of Jerusalem. Or was it wrong? No, I wanted to. And he had a nickname of Old Camelnese. Not because he had funny looking knees naturally, but because he was always on his knees praying. Can I tell you something? So, in James chapter 3, 
And see, I'm being nice today. This is the last scripture you got to turn to. Don't worry, I have others to give you, but you ain't got to turn to them. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Do you get that? If I get up here and tell you a lie or my opinion or try to manipulate me, you, God is going to judge me. And I don't want, I don't want the, what they call the botch of Egypt in the Old Testament. I ain't going to go into what it is. And I definitely don't want leprosy, all right? We all stumble in many ways. If, any is, if anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man. Anybody perfect? Raise your hand. Okay, well, I'm in the right church. <laughs> Able to keep his whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Anybody been horseback riding? Yeah. Okay. And when you turn your reins, which are attached to the bit, and it turns the horse's head, what does he do? He turns. All right. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is in itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man. But no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. But Pastor Glenn, if no man can tame the tongue, what hope we got? Well, see, that says you got the, the, the operating word here is man. We, that's what we don't want to do. With the tongues we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, is that word hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. You know, let's go back to the devil. When he got kicked out of heaven, he got kicked out of his, because of his words. I will ascend. In other words, he's saying, I'm taking over. And God's like, no, nah, you ain't. You out of here. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit impartial and sincere peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness you still with me the tongue so the word boast it means to speak in exaggerated or excessively proud terms of one's possessions skills or superior qualities to boast means it's about me let me tell you how great I am. I, I went to a funeral uh, years ago, and, and, and the pastor who preached the funeral, and, and you've got before you a, 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 a woman of God. She lived a godly life. She raised a godly family. Her children got saved. She was always in the church. She was dedicated to the Lord, and he got out there and preached about himself. The whole message was about him. This is what I did. This is what I this is what I did. And I'm thinking, Lord, this is an injustice. This is just wrong. Boasting about yourself is not supposed to be what we're about. Am I making sense? Okay. I didn't I didn't lie, exaggerate. We got one more scripture. <laughs> you see y'all, close your Bibles. That's okay. Wake, wake, wake them up. Old Testament. Jeremiah. 
This is one of my favorite scriptures. Uh, chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Again, I'm in the NIV. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boasts boast about this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth, for in these I delight. Those songs that were sang before I came up here, they were boasting about Jesus. We can boast about him. We can boast about his kindness. We can, we, we, we can boast about his justice. We can boast about his righteousness. That makes sense? And he's saying, you know, I, I, I know in the world today, uh, people like to boast about their education. Okay? Or how much they know. Or what they blog. That they're a social influencer. Whoopi. Okay? Strong men. I think of a strong men. I think of athletes. We really like to elevate athletes a lot of times. They get paid all kind of money. They got a crazy lifestyle. You think, oh, that's what I want to be. Uh, if their life ain't right, it ain't right. Amen. I, I, I have this, this maybe it's a, a guilty curiosity of what happens to people after they stop playing. And trust me, there are those who made wise decisions and those who did not. The rich man, you know any rich people brag about themselves these days? We got rich people flying into space. Y'all been paying attention to this? We, we, we got rich people who don't just want to talk about the fact I'm rich and I can do what I want to do. I can buy what I want to buy. Well, you know what? I don't care. But I do want to talk about my Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to boast about my Jesus. I want to boast about the fact he loved me when I was unlovable. Yeah. He loved me in spite of myself. Yes, Amen. Amen. Yes, so saints, keep this in mind. This ain't a scripture. Words hurt more than anything else because they last a long time. Perhaps indefinitely. People are truly harmed by words. Think before you say something because you can't take it back. And the person who gets hurt does not forget it. We all got some childhood hurts. Am I right? Amen. Somebody said something to you, and it was somebody probably you wanted their approval or their acceptance, and they said something about you, and it hurt you. You did one or two things. You either tried to... to come up to their level, which you never would, or you retreated. But that pain stayed in your heart, right? And here you are, you're grown now, and that pain is still there. If somebody brings up anything that hints at what hurts you back in that day, you're going to erupt. What you trying to say? Am I wrong? Am I the only one who got hurt when they were kids? Okay, I don't want to make sure I'm not, I'm not the only cycle here, okay? So, you know, in, in, in this crazy time, you know, what, what, what can I do, Lord? You know, we just read in James, you, you, you can't tame the tongue. A man can't tame the tongue. Well, you see, that's the thing is, we're trying to do it in our own power. We need some supernatural intervention that's going to give us some heart surgery that's going to affect what comes out of our mouth. You with me? So how can I tell you my tongue? Okay, I exaggerated again. I'm sorry. It's not even, that's not even on my slides. I, I was when I was uh, going over my message again this morning. I'm like, you know what? Lord, show me something else. Romans chapter twelve. Romans chapter twelve, verses one and two. This is Paul writing. He said, therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship, your bodies, your heart, your mouth, your mind. You with me? 
Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the renewing of your, of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So, you know, offer our bodies. Lord, I, I'm giving you me. I'm opening all the compartments of my mind and my heart, and I want you to come in, and I want what's in there that's me and ego and sin to come out. Make sense? And it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Don't talk like them. Don't think like them. Amen? You ain't trying to fit in. You're trying to be a peculiar people. Peculiar in the sense that when something's going on that's affecting everybody, but you come across as differently. You got a smile. You got hope. You're looking at tomorrow, and they depressed, and they down, and it's killing them, and some people even suicidal. You want to be that peculiar person. When things go crazy, you still got hope. Amen. Amen. So you don't want to conform. And it talks about the renewing. We said it time and time again from this pulpit. Renewing is a process. It's going to be a daily process. I want to change how I think and how I talk and what's in my heart daily. And I ain't going to get it from the world. The word has to get inside of me. It's got to change some thinking. I make it sense? And then it says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will. God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I don't know about you, but I want daddy's approval. Yeah. Amen. I want daddy to look at me and say, you're doing better, Glenn. Yeah. You ain't dead yet, but you're doing better. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So fill your heart with the right words. Now, I, I want to, let's talk about the power, of, you know, we talked about our verse a minute ago about the power of life and death of the tongue. How about this? I'm, I'm assuming, I'm, I'm making an assumption here that, that, that y'all y'all know this verse. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Notice, heart, mouth. You see the connection there? And if you made that confession, you suddenly got the power of life in you. Amen. The power of life is in the tongue. You accepted the Lord with your mouth, but it started in your heart. I, 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 uh, I was in my, my first church, and you know we, 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 we put out an invitation to come forward, and this guy came forward, and we went to the back room, and they sent me in there with him. I said, so why would you come forward? Well, my wife said it was time, and I want to keep her happy. That wasn't his heart talking. That was his wife talking. He needed a heart talk. Amen? And get this. Remember, in fact, fact Pastor Silver, oh, Lord help me. Pastor Vicky said it last Sunday that heaven rejoices when a sinner comes to the Lord. Heaven rejoices when somebody says, yes, Jesus. So the words from your mouth cause a celebration in heaven when you say yes. Amen. How about this? This is in Hebrews 13, 15, and 16. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips, that openly profess his name and do not forget to do good and to share with others for with such sacrifices God is pleased. The fruit of lips, my words, when they come from my heart and they're sincere and they're in worship to God, I'm making my daddy happy. Oh my goodness, I want to make my daddy happy. I really wanted to prove from my dad. And my dad wasn't a man of great many words. I got a lot of them, but it took me a while. He would just grunt. Dad, this happened. And there were different grunts for different things. There was, 
There was, hmm, that means he's, he, he agrees with it. That's good. Then there was, hmm, okay, I'm going to think about that one. Then there was, hmm, he didn't like that. We had, a, we had a grunting language in our house. And I have to admit, I did learn it, you know. But I wanted my dad's approval. When I got a, hmm, I'm like, all right, I'm doing good. Thank you, Lord. Mm, there you go. I hear you, brother. <laughs> Step two in tongue taming. Pray that God would give an awareness of your words. Psalms 141.3. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. When that door opens, you don't want the wrong thing coming out. Amen? You don't want something that's going to hurt somebody and it's going to stay with them for the rest of their life because of something you said. You don't want to kill their dreams. You don't want to kill their hopes. You don't want to shake their emotions. Amen? Step three, tongue taming. How about this one? Surrender your right to complain. Some people think, I got to say what's on my mind. You know what? Wisdom says you ain't got to say everything that's on your mind. In Philippians 2.14, it's in the New Living Translation. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. You get a reputation based on what you say. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Hold firmly to the word of life. Speak words of life. You, you hear this? Taming the tongue. Step four. Ask for forgiveness for any unloving words or attitudes. Forgiveness from who? Well, first, forgiveness from God, because all sin is an offense to God, right? And then if you remember offending somebody or they bring it up to you, ask forgiveness. Check your ego. Can I say that? James 3.2. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. Again, I already asked it. Anybody perfect here? Now, the word, one of the words I want to point out here. Ask for forgiveness for any unloving words or attitudes. Attitudes. How you say it. Yeah, I love you. But see, attitudes come out in different ways. Body language, facial expression, tone of voice. See, we need to say the right thing and show it the right way. If you show it the wrong way, your words mean nothing. Because your attitude is perceived. It's said that we communicate more with our body language and with our face than we do with our words. Amen. That true? Yes. All right. Taming the tongue. Practice speaking words that will encourage, comfort, edify. Edify means to uplift spiritually and inspire. In Ephesians, there in, in chapter 4, it says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their, what word does that say? Needs. Needs. And, it, it, and that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed, for the day of redemption, God, get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Now, that's a good context here. We're in the book of Ephesians. In fact, just so everybody knows, we're doing the book of Ephesians on Wednesday night. We're having an awesome study. I suggest you join us 7 o'clock on the Zoom call. Amen. It's in your bulletin. But the thing to keep in mind about Ephesians, when Paul wrote this letter in Ephesians, he was writing it to the Church of Ephesians. He ain't writing this to sinners. He's writing this to saints. He's telling the saints, get rid of the bitterness, the rage, the anger, the brawling, the slander, along with every form of malice. 
He's trying to get them to understand, not only are you tearing down sinners, you tearing down saints by saying the wrong thing. Amen. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. That should be not, not compartmentalized. That should be a lifestyle. Amen. And you want to benefit those who listen. And trust me, just like people watch you like crazy in your Christian life, they listen to you too. They got big ears. Any little thing you say, they will hear, and, and at the wrong time, they will bring it up. Oh, he ain't a Christian. You know what he said back in 1924 at, at, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon? That man's a sinner to his heart. He ain't no better than us. That Jesus ain't changed him one bit. I'm making sense. So, encouraging words. How about this? Tell somebody you're a blessing in my life. Isn't that good to hear? Don't you want to know you're making a difference? Don't you don't want to know that you're, you're putting out something positive to them that uplifts them? Amen? How about this? I'm praying for you, friend, but if you say it, you got to mean it. Uh, Jonathan has taught me something. When somebody says, pray for me, you do it right then. Because if you don't do it right then, you forget. And I'll be honest, as pastor, people come to me after church, a whole bunch of folks, and I leave, and it's like, who said that to me? Because it ain't just one of you. All right? So I'm learning. When somebody says, pray for me, we're going to do it right then. Amen? Amen? Consider that time management. There is much more ahead of you. That's when somebody feels they're stuck in a rut. That, that, that they, they can't see past today. You know, and, 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 and sometimes we go through seasons in life. We, we, we have down seasons, we have winters, we have falls, we have allergy season, but we also have these seasons emotionally. And so there, there comes a time that we need somebody to say something to us to get us through that season. Amen. 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 God has a great plan for your life. That's a reminder that God cares about them. That God has a plan for them. That God has a message for them. That God has a purpose for them. Amen? Amen. Be strong and courageous. You can do this. Be, the, the, the term, be strong or fear not, be strong and courageous, fear not, are mentioned like 365 times in the Bible. Why? Because we get scared. Because we, 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 we feel like we can't go on. We feel like we can't handle it. Amen? So be strong and courageous. You can do this. In other words, you don't want to have a philosophy of, you know, uh, brother, don't be weak and scared. Amen? How about this? I love you, and God loves you. No, I did not get that from, uh, what's his name? The big time preacher? My name? Uh, who am I talking about? Uh, the tall guy with a smile. Joel That's the guy, Joel Osteen. There you go. Oh, God. <laughs> hey, you got it. So hey, I can do charades up here, you know. I love you, and God loves you. I was uh, at, at, at the main company I was with. Uh, we had to do community outreach things uh, with, with, for the company, and we were in Philadelphia, and so we were going to make lunches for the homeless. So we went to this. Um, homeless organization, and we're making sandwiches and, and putting in chips and fruit snacks and putting them in these bags. My job was to write an encouraging note on each bag. I'm like, why did y'all pick me? But one of the things I put out there was, I love you and God loves you. That's truth, right? They said what people would do with those bags, the homeless, they would collect them all, and they, they'd eat the food, collect the bag, put it in their pocket, and when they had a bad day, they'd pull the bags out. Because they needed a word that was going to get them through that day. Amen. Sometimes, folks, you need to give a word to get somebody through that day. Don't give up on your, don't give up on your dreams. I mean, we, we like the Bible story about Joseph. He's given a dream that one day his brothers are going to bow to him and 
like a dummy. He told his brothers and they threw him in the pit. Y'all know the story. But the dream did happen. It took 20 years, but the dream happened. And I'm sure when he's at the bottom of the pit, Lord, you didn't tell me this part. <laughs> when he was made a servant in Potiphar's house, Lord, you didn't tell me this part. When Potiphar's wife lied on him, he ended up in prison. Lord, as a roach crawls across his chest. You didn't tell me this part. Yet, he ended up in the palace, second in command in Egypt, doing the will of God. Not only saving Egypt, not only saving his family, all the nations around, because famine hit all of that area. So the Canaanites, the Canaanites, all these, the Jebusites, everybody needed food, needed to come to Egypt because God had put wisdom in Joseph. And because God put that in Joseph, he saved a whole lot of people's lives. But the dream happened years ago. Don't give up on your dreams, folks. God has put something in your heart that you know you're supposed to do, that you feel is your destiny. Don't give up on your dreams. Amen. 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 God is preparing you for greater. What's greater? I don't know, but God does. You know, I, I'm, I'm willing to say that most of us ended up in a better position than we ever thought we'd get it to. I'm hoping at least. And if not, don't give up on your dreams. It makes sense? And how about this? God likes it when things are bigger than you. It shows we need him. He didn't say, go do it. Good luck. No, no, no. He's saying, pray to me. Walk with me. Listen to me. Read my word. Take advantage of having the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. It's okay for it to be bigger. We don't see... <laughs> We don't see the result because we try to do stuff in our own strength. But when God gets involved, miracles happen. The amazing happens. He's greater than what, you know, he can do greater than what we can ask or think. You read that, right? So use words of life. Proverbs. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Don't you want to bring some healing to some people's lives? Amen. Don't you want to see a turnaround for some people? And, and remember we, we, we said that, that, that exhortation means to give strength, to uplift. It also means to give a wise word in the right time. Remember us talking about that? The wise brings healing. So let's all work on being wise. Amen? Amen. A tame tongue has benefits. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Calamity means misery, loss, awkwardness, and disaster. You ever said something to somebody and you know it was wrong and you know you hurt them, but then you avoided them? You were awkward around them. You felt like you weren't good enough to be around them. Let's go back to Peter. Peter denied Jesus three times. You know, when Jesus got arrested, he's, he's following, and, and he denied him. You're right? He denied him three times. So when Jesus rose from the dead and the angels at the tomb, the angel told Mary, go tell the disciples and Peter, because in Peter's mind, it was awkward to deal with Jesus at that point. So then Jesus had a talk with him. Feed my sheep, remember that? Feed my lambs. He pretty much gave him a charge at that time. When he said, feed my lambs, he said, I want you to teach these new Christians. And feed my sheep for the ones who are mature maturing. And feed my sheep, get those ready for to be future leaders. In other words, I, I, I got an assignment for you. Don't get off with me. Rely on me. Trust me. Amen? This is in Colossians. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. How about this part, Karen? Psalms, 
psalmist, right? Hymns, we heard those today, right? And songs from the Spirit, did we hear those today? Singing to God with gratitude in our hearts. Y'all saw me when I got up here, I was crying. That wasn't sadness, that was joy. That was thankfulness. Knowing who I am and what I deserve to see God save me anyway. So make a choice. Choose life-giving words. Mm. Amen. Amen. Here's something to remind you of. You may be the only Bible some people read. If you look at my sign outside, it says, uh, uh, got a Bible? Understand it? We can help. I think most people got a Bible in their house. I really think that. We got a whole bunch in our house. If you need a Bible, let me know. I'll give you some of mine. I just can't throw them out. But I, I, I need you to get this. You are the only Bible some people see. We have generations that have never been to church, don't know anything about Jesus, don't know anything about hope, don't know anything about eternal life, don't know about anything about peace. They just know what they know, and, and some of them are dealing with these generational curses, and they got all this anger inside of them. But then they see you. I'm going to tell the story. I told the Jonathan earlier today, and I hope I can get through it without crying again. We went to a pastoral lunch this week, and there was this amazing speaker named Abdu Murray. He was actually, he went to U of M, he got his bachelor's, he got his doc, he's got his uh, juris doctorate, so he was a lawyer. He was a trial lawyer, very articulate, but he was a Muslim. And he kept approaching Christians and saying, why do you believe in Jesus? Why are you a Christian? And they couldn't give him a good answer. And he's a lawyer. He knows how to go after somebody. So he went, he started finding out something. Some people only became Christians because it seemed to be tradition. Mm. Well, my family did it, so I'm going to do it. He said, then I realized my, 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 my hypocritical stance, that's why I'm a Muslim. My family did it, that's why I did it. Mm. So he went into a nine-year investigation of Christianity. Mm. And at the end of it, he said that Jesus Christ is Savior. Mm. So he told the story. Uh, it wasn't his story, but it was about this missionary who went to Yugoslavia. And, and, and Yugoslavia is, is kind of crazy. You've got all these different factions. You've got, you, you know, it's not even Yugoslavia anymore, but you've got the Serbs, you've got the Muslims, you've got the Bosnians, they're all trying to kill each other. And then, so he went, and this missionary went over there and he's talking to this man, and, and he was saying, you know, I, I want to talk about Jesus. He said, I don't want to hear about your Jesus. Because the government and the church work together. They wear the big hats, they wear the long robes, and they abuse us. They ain't nothing you can say to me about Jesus. So the missionary said, well, look at it this way. You know, you, you have a hat and a coat that you wear all the time, and, and, and one day somebody steals your hat and coat and robs the grocery store. And the people say, oh, we know who that was. We know whose hat and coat that was. So he said, you know, what if the police come to get you because they're identifying your hat and coat? He said, what are you going to say? He said, well, I didn't do it. That's not me. He said, well, that's the problem with these religious leaders. They're wearing the hat and coat of Jesus, but they ain't exemplifying Jesus. So the guy said, I still ain't accepting your Jesus. So he said, he ministered to him for years until finally one day he said yes to Jesus. He said, you want to know why? You wear that coat well, Jesus. You're the only Bible some people see. Wear that coat. Say the right words. Speak those words of life, people. How about this? When they hear the words that come from you, what would their impression be of a Christian? Amen? Amen. Can you say testimony? Mm. Be that person that builds up and shows that it's a true blessing to be a child of God. Is it a joy for you? Does it come out? Does it, do, 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 you, do you show or express just this, this inner joy that Jesus is in my life? I've got hope. I've got a reason to smile. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow, Karen. Amen? Amen. Last verse of the day. Believers shouldn't curse anyone or be quarrelsome but they should be gentle 
and show courtesy to everyone because you're the only Bible some people are going to see. So let's watch our words, people. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have you. abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so that gives us a challenge that we have to be careful what's in our heart what we allow in our hearts amen and I would say that as Christians we have to be careful what we allow our eyes to see what we allow our ears to hear amen because it's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks so if you as a Christian allow yourself to watch every kind of movie that's out there and every kind of language that's in those movies, and you see all of that stuff that is not godly in those movies, then what's in you? You allow all that stuff to come in you. So what you need to do is fill yourself up with the word of God. Amen. Fill yourself up with the songs of the kingdom, like the songs we sang today. And then when pressure comes, that's gonna be what's in you, so that's what's gonna come out of you. Because what happens is when you're under pressure, that's when you snap. We saw something snap and we saw a slap, but we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> but when you're under pressure, what's in you causes you to react. You'll react negatively because you allow a lot of negative stuff to come in you. Put the word in you, amen? Put the songs of Zion in you, amen? So that that will come out of you. Praise Jesus, amen. Amen. Well, Facebook family and in the sanctuary, we want to prepare now for our communion. We're going to ask our uh, ushers in the sanctuary if you could pass out the emblems. And those watching on Facebook, we will ask you to get your uh, crackers and juice. Just pray over it and sanctify it. And then you can participate with us also in our communion. I want to read the scripture in Matthew chapter 26. In Matthew 26, and I'm just going to read verses 26 through 28. And this is Jesus celebrating the last Passover uh, with his disciples before his crucifixion. And after they ate the Passover meal, which you know included unleavened bread, and they would also drink wine, and they, they celebrated the, the Passover. But then Jesus, at this point in verse 26, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread blessed and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And so in that moment, Jesus took the occasion of the Passover meal to inaugurate to inaugurate and change the Passover into now the Lord's Supper. And he said, I want you to look at this bread and this wine in a different way. Because they looked at the unleavened bread and the, the blood of the lamb and the wine. They looked at all of that from the standpoint of the Passover, which was part of the old covenant. The Passover signified and they remembered the time when God was delivering them from captivity in Egypt and the last uh, the last uh, plague that was on them was the death of the firstborn. And Jesus told the Israelites, if you will take the blood of the lamb and put it on the doorpost, the doorpost, then the death angel will see that blood, recognize it as covenant, and the death angel will pass by your house. So none of the firstborn of the Israelites died. But Jesus said, now in this moment, I'm about to die. And I'm gonna find, I'm gonna become that final lamb that's slain. That's why he had to die during Passover week. So that he could be that final lamb slain for the sins of the world. And he said, now I want you to recognize that this blood is different. Now the blood is gonna represent my blood that's gonna be shed for your sins. Now it's gonna represent the, the, the unleavened bread or the cracker or the wafer. It's gonna represent my body that's gonna be broken for you. 
So I'm instituting a new meaning because now we're going to have a new covenant based on a final sacrifice, my sacrifice. So we want to thank God today for the Lamb of Jesus Christ. Amen? And that's why we celebrate our communion. So we want to start off with the bread or the wafer, if you can get that out. And the bread represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says that he was broken for us. He was bruised for us. Amen? So let's receive together, remember how he suffered on our behalf. And then we have the wine or the juice. And that represents his blood, which was shed for us. And again, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, it became that final sacrifice, that final blood that was shed, that not just uh, covered our sins for a year like the lamb's blood, but he covered our sins and atoned for our sins forever. Amen? So let's remember the blood that he shed for us, for our forgiveness. Amen. 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 So grateful for the songs that the praise team ministered on the blood, that medley, which is awesome to remind us that there is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. It just took us back to those back in the day songs of power in the blood. And there is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, at this time, for we want to, I just want to take a moment, if we can stop and pause wherever you're at in the sanctuary, I want to take a moment and just pray for everybody, those on Facebook Live and those in the sanctuary as well. Father God, we just lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you for him shedding his blood for us. We thank you for him dying on the cross for our sins. And Father God, we thank you for the word that's gone forth that's telling us that we need to be careful of our words. Father God, we pray that you will make this a real change moment for everyone, Lord God, in the sanctuary, for everyone who heard the word, for the, for the pastor who preached the word, for everyone, that it will be something that they can apply to their lives, Lord God, and let their words be seasoned with your grace and your peace. And Father God, I'm praying that you will bless us and allow us to continue to go forth and do your will and be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 On Facebook Live right now, we're going to say in the uh, comments, we're going to put in there about offering. And we want to thank you for uh, donating to our church. You can give to our church in uh, three different ways. You can either mail in your donations to our P.O. box. The information is there. You can give on our website securely, or you can give via Cash App if that's something that you use. Um, so we want to thank you for your donations and for continuing to support our ministry. At this time, we want to uh, also do our announcements. So those in the sanctuary and on Facebook Live, you can hear what's going on in Life Renewal Church. Hallelujah. Well, this is the month of May, and we start off by saying Happy Mother's Day. I know that's not until next Sunday, but I think mothers need to be celebrated all month. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to celebrate mothers all month. All mothers, raise your hand. On Facebook Live, I can't see your hands being raised, but you can put in the comments, I'm a mother. We celebrate you, okay? Amen. Um, as far as our announcements coming up on May 15th, that's a Sunday at 9.15, we will have our pastor's vision breakfast. And that's for anyone who wants to become a member of our church, or if you just want to hear the pastor's vision and get to know us as people and find out what we're all about and why we started this church, you can come on May 15th at 9.15. You do need to RSVP by calling the number that's in your bulletin um, on Facebook. It's also um, on our banner on our Facebook page or on our website. So you can call that number to RSVP so we'll know how many people to prepare for. Uh, we have coming up on Friday, May 20th, for the Women of Wisdom. Women of Wisdom, are you in the house? Hey! Woohoo! <laughs> We're going to have on May 20th a spy digital escape room. So I know Miss Tiffany's uh, escape room artist. <laughs> so, and I know uh, Veronica is an escape room artist.
So we need the ones who know how to get out of these rooms to be in the mix so I don't get stuck in, you know, this is digital. So I won't really be claustrophobic, but I might think I'm claustrophobic. But anyways, it'll be a spy-themed mission that's gonna take us around the world virtually, solving clues so we can escape the room. It should be a lot of fun. So we're doing a fun event on Zoom for our Women of Wisdom. G-Man, are you in the house? Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got some G-Men in the house. God's men, they're having a Zoom meeting on Thursday, May 19th at 6.30, and they're continuing to talk about emotional incarceration. So men, come on, get on the Zoom. Get over your emotional incarceration. Get free, amen. Talk to other brothers. Have that discussion, that Bible study, amen. Amen. Wednesdays at 7 via Zoom, we're having our Bible study, and we're studying the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians has so many rich nuggets of truth that I believe every believer should know. So if you want to earmark any study, this is the study you need to be on so you can know the truth and the doctrines from the book of Ephesians. We have a transportation ministry. If you need a ride to church, and you live within, let's say, a three to five mile radius of the church, we'll be happy to come pick you up. Uh, contact Brother Eric Liberty. Eric, raise your hand. He's in the sanctuary, or you can call the church office and we will put you in contact with him. We have a prayer call on Thursdays at 7 p.m. You can call in to receive prayer, to pray for others, to give your prayer requests. Uh, the phone number um, is in our bulletin. It's also on the banner on our Facebook page. So if you are on Facebook Live, you can still call in and participate with that. Um, and we also want to just thank everyone on Facebook for being a part of our service. We appreciate you so much. And we're going to uh, shut down our Facebook service so we continue in the sanctuary. But we love you guys, and we will see you next week. God bless you. Amen. Amen.